Good day to all. I am Ms. Vinita, Assistant Professor at KH Community Women's College, Manjeri, and I would like to share my understanding of the poem Landscape of the Kyapi Barib River, written by Joao Cabral de Melo de Nito, a Brazilian poet, with you all. The poem was originally written in Portuguese, and hence our study is based on its English translation. As always, much will be lost in translation, but we'll try to explore it as much as we can using available resources. I am attempting it roughly in three sections. The first section is about the poet and his style in general. In processing and information, theoretically it is said that we do top up processing and bottom down. This means to get a deeper understanding of what we listen to, we need to depend on two factors. The phonological code, which is the words, the phrases, the structure, etc. as used by the writer. And the second one is the context or the background information of the listener. So let's also look at some basic details related to the writer and his background to enrich our understanding. And also some tips to explore any poem in six steps. Number one, obviously it's reading the poem many times. Second one, studying the title. Third one, identifying the speaker. You can look at the gender, the age, the nationality, the ideologies. All these can help you explore the poem at different levels. And the next step is trying to identify the mood and tone of the poem. Fifth step would be identifying the possible themes. And the sixth step, which is very, very important for any student or learner, is to ensure clarity by writing it down or paraphrasing the poem line by line or stanza wise. This will help us figure out what we lack clarity in. About the poet, his name is pronounced as I have got from different sources because it's a Brazilian name. It's pronounced as João Cabral de Melo Neto. He is a Brazilian poet and diplomat and he was one of the most influential poets of late Brazilian modernism of the post-World War II era. He was a strong voice who expressed strong criticism of literature, of artists and of Brazilian society through his poems. He has been praised for his wit, ontological intelligence and metrical mastery. By ontological we mean his philosophical studies related to existence, reality and the nature of being. Metrical mastery is related to the composition, the choice of words, the structure, the style of his writing, uh, the capacity for inventive thought and quick understanding are all included in this. He has often been referred to hence as a difficult poet, but our selection is an understandable one. The poem, The Landscape of Capivari River. To get into the core, an easier process, let's give a small challenge to our poetic sensibility. So I'm deviating slightly from the poem to make us understand what is imagism, how, how does a poem and the image work on our mind, etc. Now, what do these colors bring to your mind? It's nothing but a certain vertical stripes of green, yellow, blue, etc. But what does it bring to your mind? Does it bring football times, Brazil, the striking World Cup goals or the Brazilian carnivals or even the man Ronaldo? So a color or an image can bring in many associations. Based on these associations, we develop a chain of thought, we give them meanings. Now, think of something that is more familiar to you, which is our river Ganges. Ganges is our river Ganga Nadi. In English, it's pronounced as Ganges. What are your associations related to this river? Is it the geographical features alone that come to your mind? Just give some concentrated attention on all the associations that come to your mind. Does it bring in divinity, purity, culture or in, in total contrast to all these progress and devastation and pollution? 
think of all associations. Our brain has a very strong way of connecting images to multiple thoughts and meanings. And this is applicable to poetry too. Images and imagery used in poems should bring in multiple thoughts and even powerful emotions. Maybe this is the simplest way of making us understand what is imagism and imagist poetry, which this particular Brazilian poet, João Cabral de Melo Nito, has used in many of his poems. So hereafter, I won't be pronouncing the full name. I'll be calling it de Melo Nito. You can keep in mind the word constructivist poetry and concrete poetry when you talk about Di Mello Nito and his poems related to Brazilian poetry. I go back to the previous slide once again. He was a, a leading boy, voice among the generations of 45 poets. Generation of 45 is the term used specifically to refer to the group he belonged to and these poets were noticed for their austere style. Austere means plain and not at all decorative in terms of expressions and impressively severe or strict expressions that they used in their poems. His poetry is referred to as constructivist poetry and it is characterized by anti-lyrical language. Now what is anti-lyrical language? They avoided all excessive descriptions and subjectivity of lyrical poetry or romantic poetry. So the, his style has been connected to surrealism and images poets where concrete images and objects have been employed to create highly evocative compositions. Evocative, an evocative poem is one that can generate very powerful feelings and emotions. Social reality that social reality was the theme that he was particularly interested in and through his poems he reflected on the harsh landscape of northeastern Brazil, his native place. Pernambuco is the English spelling of the word, but pronunciation tells me it's pronounced as Pernambuco and another native place that constantly finds reference in his poem is the place Recife, R-E-S-C-I-F-E, -E, which again the pronunciation tells me it is Hesifi, according to the Brazilian, and the Capybarib River. So, since most of his poems are specifically intended to reflect on social realities that he wanted people to be aware of, I have mentioned his native place Pernambuco, Recife, and the Capibarib River. So this poem also cannot be much deviated from these realities of northeastern Brazil where he had concerns related to its economics, its development, its people, its, pe uh, its resource division, etc. etc. Now the present poem that we are learning in the first year BA English, the landscape of Capibarib River is the first part of a long narrative poem titled The Dog Without Feathers and this is a translation. Now remember you are learning only the first part of a long narrative. The main poem or the original poem is called The Dog Without Feathers and this poem is divided into four sections as you can see on this slide. First section which is called Landscape of the Capibarib River Second section again, the landscape of Capybarib. Third one is the fable of the Capybarib. And the fourth one is the discourse of the Capybarib. The first two parts of this long narrative poem are descriptive and it focuses on the landscape of the Capybarib River. So the poem is not only about the river, it is also about the landscape. It's an allegory of the river and its impoverished people. This means the image of the poem has a meaning beyond its geographical features, a moral or a political meaning that can go into its interpretation. So keep in mind his image style 
look for broader messages or occurrences or real world issues as you flow along with the course of the Kepiberi River. And descriptions say that the dog without feathers is a tightly woven, deafening to his metrical peculiarities, long narrative poem in which Cabral turns to the physical and social reality of his native state, Pernambuco, and so it is considered to be an allegory of the river and its impoverished people. Now, let's move on to the section 2 of this presentation. We are trying to analyze the poem both ways, bottom up and top down. Study carefully the language used by the poet because he considered his poetry more as a construction than a revelation. His attempt is always to create a pure and strict verse which uses language to create landscape rather than to announce them. So his images are tightly organized into a kind of poem machine that functions on its own. He composes his lines with the logic and objectivity of a builder or the poetic engineer. So getting into the poem, River Capibari mentioned in the poem is one of the most important landmarks of his native northeastern Brazil. The city of Recife or Recife has very close connection to this river being on the coast and so does Pernambuco which you can see on the map. This is the factual geographical setting of the poem. Now moving to the poem The Landscape of Capivarib River. Stanzas 1, 2 and 3 of the poem he has used similes and metaphor connecting the dog to the river. It would be ideal if you can keep the poem open in front of you. The dog has been used as a central image in the poem. City crossed by the river compared to a street crossed by the dog, a piece of fruit cut by the sword, the river reminding him of the dog's docile tongue and sad belly, maybe the river lapping the land or the land of Hesifi or the northeastern Brazil, an unimaginable like the wet lapping tongue of the dog. And then in the third stanza, he talks about the river was like a dog without feathers. The dog without feathers may be a way of showing deprivation. Normally, we don't relate feathers to dogs. Dog is not something with which we relate feathers. But certain attributes are given to certain things based on which we expect beyond what we see. So maybe the poet wants us to go beyond what is represented as blue color on the map of Brazil. If you look at Pernambuco, I mean the river Capibarib on the map, you can see it is represented as of any, any river, it is represented in blue color. So when he calls the dog without feathers, it is his way of showing deprivation. This may be a reference to the dissolute people living on the banks of this river, particularly the social fabric of the northeastern Brazil. There is also a suggestion that the connection between the living and the non-living or the organic and the inorganic is strongly established by this imagery. Dog and fruit, living, street and sword, non-living. So just go through the similes in stanzas 1, 2 and 3 to understand this. In the upcoming stanzas, which is stanzas 3 and 4, he is using catalogues. Cataloging is a method that is used in poetry to list things that can be connected to that particular theme. So in the stanzas 3 and 4, he uses catalogues and lists what the river knows and what it doesn't know. It moves from, when I say it moves from, as you look at stanza 3 and 4, 
the poet talks about certain things that the poet, that river knows and then certain things that the river doesn't know. So as you move along stanzas 3 and 4, the poet is taking you from the pristine, pure condition of the water and river to the present, perhaps indicating the river should not have known what it knows now. This condition of the river should be identified with the corresponding life on the land. You see the words that he has used, the river. He doubts whether the river knows about the blue rain and the blue colored fountains, but it definitely knows about the mud, rust and the silt and the mucus. So here you can see the cataloging is used to reflect what the river should have known, but it doesn't know, and what the reality is and what the river knows. So using these cataloging as a poetic technique, critics say that he is conveying ethical reflections and specific moral issues of nature and animal life. Looking once again to the images and the imagery in the poem, we can see that the, the central image or the analogy used in the poem is that of a dog. You can see various colors used in the poem like the pristine blue color to the color of the silt and mud and black and brown. And the whole poem is rich in descriptive images. He touches it with, he enriches the poem with tactile images, images that you can touch or feel. and. Through all these images and descriptions, the intention of the poet is to create rich feelings and emotions and thoughts. In the next two stanzas, the poet says that the river never opens up to fish, but instead in flowers to a flora that is squalid and beggarly. And he uses words like hard-leaved mangroves. Through all these images, the course of the river and the dispassionate flow of the river is leading us to life in northeastern Brazil and its squalid conditions. A polluted, ill-treated river is equated to the unequal social conditions in Brazil between the different zones. If you make a basic study of the economy in Brazil, comparing the northeast and the south and the north, you can see there are significant differences in the differences in the distribution of resources and wealth. So human figure, using all these, the human figure is shown as emergent from the animal and elemental worlds. At the same time, we are, the human beings are becoming destructive of all these. In the next stanzas also, the comparison continues between the dog and the river. When he says that the river's childbirth is fluid and invertebrate like a dog and it never boils in anger, but in silence it bears the bloating poverty and yields in silence, the color employed here is black. The loss of its purity, fluidity and the diversity are all suggested through these usages of colors. It is suggested that even the, the black people who lives on the, near the river banks are also represented using the color black. Now, why are the black people mentioned in here? We said that he is interested in referring to social conditions. These black people are not listed anywhere in the economic indices of a great nation. Human life that emerges from the very elements of nature turns out to be destructive of its very elements. This may be understood or construed as the larger theme, the poem, points to. In the stanzas that follow, we see much heavier words have been used. Stagnation, thicker, warmer, trudging through, 
Now, if you follow the course or the trajectory of the river, it is shown to reach a stagnation similar to a crazy man's stagnation, which he highlights using the words stagnation of hospitals, asylums, prisons of the dirty and smothered life. It is here that we see the social fabric of Brazil or particularly northeastern Brazil increasingly incorporated into the poem. I'll read out from the slide. It may refer to those who are oppressed by diseases and by the endless greed for their lands, the mentally ill and the convicts who are forgotten in failed prisons and healing systems or children and adolescents who live on the streets and spend their short lives begging, committing crimes and inevitably becoming drug addicts. So keep in mind the imagist, the surrealist techniques that the poet Di Mello Nito is, has been popular for. Now, as the poem proceeds, we can see as the words emerge in the poem, one is no longer able to differentiate the course of the Kyapibari River from the course of lives of those who live near its water and mud. So the word stagnation is simultaneously narrating the ruin of people who inhabit the landscape. And you can see that the trajectory of the river is being traced through Hesifi and is centered on the landscape of his northeastern Brazil, one of the country's poorest and most socially fractured regions. I think this would be an ideal description to talk about uh, the landscape and the river because you have to answer an essay question which mentions the poem is uh, as significantly about the landscape as it is about the river. So you can also say that the poet is using the poem as a critique of the Northeast history of social neglect. And now helping you to understand the word stagnation a bit more. The stagnation of the river is extended to the human world. You can see the image of the sugar factories and the hospitals and the asylums of Pernambuco, the indifference of a modernized society to the very sources and elements that support it, the images of human beings turning their backs to the river, and the image of flies hovering around the river which are all frightening reminders of death and disease. The river that has lost its ease of flow with dirt and silt has little life in it. Thus the river is indistinguishable from the land and life that depends on it. So it simultaneously narrates the ruin of the people who inhabit this landscape. The poem may hence be read as a critique of social neglect of Northeast Brazil. The image of decayed palaces eaten by mold and mistletoe and the obese trees dripping thousand sugars all reinforce this image of neglect and desolation. If you look at the concluding stanzas, they are pregnant with questions. Now, why has the poet used so many questions in the concluding stanzas? The suggestion is that this kind of a winding up given to the poem is nothing but an agonizing cry reflecting the poet's concern and his intention to push everyone to think of universal crisis. Something like thinking locally but it is an urge to act globally. The flow of, I repeat that, this is like thinking locally and acting globally. The flow of rivers from blue to brown is a universal crisis caused by crazy human intervention. The last line is the most evocative driving home this purpose. 
why then were its eyes painted blue on maps that is the last line of the poem why then were its eyes painted blue on maps we have come a long way from the blue pristine condition of these rivers to where we have taken it today it's something like a powerful wake up call to every human inhabiting the globe through the geographical setting in pehnambuco and hisifi and the capybara river so that was the gist of the poem and its techniques and meanings now let's move on to the section 3 of this presentation where we can look into the poetic techniques and styles and themes which will help you uh, with the material you need in writing essays and critical appreciation of the work the poet was against the use of exaggerated language in poetry because he believed that poetry was a powerful tool to create reality de mello was known as a poet engineer and so his intention was to create the desired emotions with precise words and symmetry so his language has been defined as anti lyrical showing his dismissive attitude towards everything that is sentimental and romantic but this doesn't mean that the poem is devoid of feelings he writes mostly about austere subjects serious issues and in this case the capybara river its pollution its landscape and its inhabitants trying to reinforce the message of misery his language may hence look unpolished but it is said to be a perfect architecture that purposefully fits its theme so that the two become the same or indistinguishable so as you read through every line of the poem the misery the deprivation the desolate human beings all these must come into our minds it's not only describing the landscape or the river all these can be incorporated into your writing when you are writing critical appreciation of the poem or thematic analysis of the work how does the poet blend the theme and his composition in such a way that one becomes the other the, the language of the poetry becomes the social critique of northeastern brazil now to bring in the purpose of poetry he took it is said that the writer took poetry out of the literary salon and placed it at the door of modern man reflecting a unity between the linguistic and social conditions poetry hence became in his hand the instrument to show the grim conditions of his homeland in stark clarity so what i'm trying to tell you is that if you ignore the any one of these approaches either the bottom up or top down we might miss much of the meanings without understanding a little bit of the poet's intentions behind writing the poetry we may not be able to give the meanings he intended to the choice of words he has used in the poetry keeping all these principles regarding poetry and composition in his in mind we can try to get to the core of the poem and the suggested possible themes that you can make out of this poem as you can read on the slide one possible theme is environmental degradation which is connecting to a local context but which can be applied to a global crisis second one is a social commentary particularly related to hisifi pehnambuco and the capybara and the economy of the land it can be about a general uh, commentary on man's intervention on nature the 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 way man forgets his dependence on nature and destroys the very source that supports him it can be talking about stagnation talking about the theme it can be something that takes the re readers from the river of his land 
to rivers of the world so from pehnambuko or hesifi or kepiberib he is taking us to every part of the world connected to every map that is drawn uh, of the rivers in india can be separated from this particular crisis that is talking about think about all those civilizations which are possible only because of the rivers we had in india what is their present condition think about the clean ganga project how polluted has our rivers become so this need not be restricted to a very local image of the capybara or the hesifi or pehnambuko but all these become one it can be taken or connected to a global crisis third another po- possible theme is illusion versus reality what is represented on the map and what is understood as blue like the feathers given to a dog what was it originally does the the, the poet asks in the poem does the river know anything about its origin right now it has reached a state of oblivion of all its pristine clear lucid qualities all because of one species called man so what is the reality and what is the illusion that we live by other possible themes are our dependence and at the same time our careless disregard for nature and environment another one the degradation of the flowing river as intertwined with agony suffering tragedies and inequalities of human life or in short the river now knows what it should not know losing all its pristine genuine qualities of life and purity in one of the essay questions mentioned in your text it is asking you to explain the poem as a consciousness racing poem if you are attempting this as a as an essay the poem can be said to be communicating and mobilizing the necessary strength in the public to transform a social reality using all these images and the references to all the above themes we have mentioned so if you are attempting this as a consciousness racing poem you have to touch upon the images used what is the analogy what is the dog, the the f- dog without feathers imply what are the possible themes and then come to the consciousness racing attempt Uh, made by the poet so with all the possible themes it can be easily substantiated that this is a consciousness racing poem showing certain stark realities this will also substantiate his view that poetry is a tool and a methodology for understanding and exploring the world and the place of emotions and human beings in it In the next three slides, I have incorporated uh, a few critical comments on the poet and a question to give our individual perception about the poem. Think differently but connect it and develop the ability to substantiate our individual arguments with evidence from the text or other sources. This is a quote I have used about the poetry of the poem. di mello nito poetry is the exploration of the materiality of words and of the possibilities of organization of verbal structures things that have nothing to do with what is romantically called inspiration or even intuition so this you can connect to the anti lyrical quality of his poems another quote for cabral Poetry was a tool and a methodology for exploring and understanding the world and the human emotional plays in it not the heady fighty fantasy stuff of the romantic poets this idea also can be incorporated when you talk about this poem the landscape of capybara river as a consciousness racing poem Jalal Qadir has said about Cabral de Mello Nieto that he is a sparing writer concerned with presenting the world as nearly as it is as possible there is little question that his sparse image driven poetry represents an important perhaps an even crucial way of seeing the world 
Now, this is a question I have posed for you, the readers, to think about. What are the advantages and disadvantages of a deeply local poetry when it comes to trying to talk about the human condition in general? You can come up with your own answers to this, but this is one small idea, a spark that can help you analyze it further. It is seeking the interconnectivity between the human and non-human worlds. Poetry is here seeking ethical solutions to a destruction man is causing to its very elements. What is perceived as reality in the poet's premises, this becomes a universal theme. This is the original Portuguese name of the poem. I am quite ignorant on how to pronounce it. O cow sen plumas, maybe? The dog without feathers. Now, about the poem, in one of the blogs or websites is written, both the river and the dwellers of such a place would be dogs without feathers, an expression that seems to define, by means of an extreme paradox, situations of complete destitution. Now, in the following slides, I have printed the poems, just in case some of you do not have the poem in hand. Maybe you can have a closer look at all these. Now, the explanation is not complete. We can say that this is just an attempt to study the poem using the available resources. I'll be very grateful if you can come up with extra information, which you may please write to me at mkvinitaoutlook.com. No explanation shall be perfect when it comes to a poem. Thank you all. Thank you very much for your listening.